Hello all, Christos Aneste, Christ is risen. Welcome to day two of week 39 of the Religious Education Initiative. Uh, we're continuing now with the Didache, uh, which we're actually almost finished with now. Uh, this time we will read some final guidance to the early church, to the early Christians, about how they should treat each other, how they should always keep their lives focused on the imminent coming of the Lord. So, uh, it says, Furthermore, correct one another, not in anger, but in peace, as you find in the gospel. And if anyone wrongs his or her neighbor, let no one speak to that person, nor let that one hear a word from you until he or she repents. As for your prayers and acts of charity and all your actions, do them all just as you find it in the gospel of our Lord. Watch over your life. Do not let your lamps go out, and do not be unprepared, but be ready, for you do not know the hour when our Lord is coming. Gather together frequently, seeking the things that benefit your souls, for all the time you have believed will be of no use to you, if you are not found perfect in the last time. So that's a brief reading, uh, and what we see here is the apostles making very clear to the uh, Christians as, as they leave them. Uh, this is the teaching of the apostles at the end of their life. Uh, the teaching of the apostles uh, even at the end of the life perhaps of some of their earliest disciples. Uh, so they're, they're summing up what was taught by the apostles and what they're making the point of very clearly is as Christians we expect and we hope and we put our trust and uh, you know we're putting all our eggs in this one basket we are looking for the coming of the lord and everything we do we live differently because we expect the coming of the lord so uh, that reflects how they are to live uh, how they are to spend their time uh, how they are to spend their lives together um, we we see reference then even very briefly here uh, a lot of the, the parables that we talk about e even in Holy Week, don't let your lamps go out, referring to the, the ten virgins. Don't be unprepared. Uh, you know, the bridegroom is coming. Uh, we do not know the hour when our Lord is coming. All these many passages we were actually just reading uh, the last few weeks about, you know, uh, the, the servant who is waiting for his master to return. Uh, it says gather together frequently. This means, you know, for worship but not only for worship, to spend our time with Christian people is important, but especially to, to gather together for worship, uh, seeking after the things that benefit our souls, so that we remain invested, we remain connected, we remain committed to the things of God, saying, uh, and, and this is a little bit scary, uh, when it says, for all the time that you have believed, even if you've been a Christian from your childhood, all of that is no good to you if when the Lord comes, if when the last day arrives, you are not found perfect. Now, this can be scary, and we need to be clear. Perfection is not uh, found for Christian people in never having sinned. Perfection is found in walking in repentance, so that when we sin, not if we sin, but when we sin, we turn away from that sin. We turn back towards the Lord. We ask his forgiveness. Um, of course, what this means is, as Christian people do this, we sin less. We grow more holy. We become closer to God. This is the path that we're supposed to be on. That, I think, is why, in the first bit, it talks about the need to correct each other. Uh, because if the Christian community is called to be set apart, called to be different, called to be defined by this reality of Christ's return, of the Lord's presence in their midst, of the active ministry of the Holy Spirit in all of their lives as individuals and as a community, then there isn't room for, it is not possible, we should say, for someone who has sinned against a brother or sister or just who is living in sin by himself or herself. Uh, it's not possible for that person, if they refuse to repent, if they refuse to change, it is not possible for them to remain an active, normal part of the church. So 
this is something that is expanded elsewhere in, in a number of the epistles. What do you do with a member of the Christian church who has fallen into sin, who has offended or sinned against a brother or sister? Uh, what do you do with them? How do you correct them? How do you invite them back? How do you reconcile someone who has fallen away? How do you bring them back into the church? Uh, so there's a lot more detail, but what this is saying here is that the church cannot tolerate, cannot normalize unrepented for sin in the life of the church. This is a high standard for us, and it's not one that we're particularly comfortable with, because, frankly, all of us have sins that we struggle to repent for. All of us have fallen away. All of us are, in some sense, uh, holding on to the things of this world instead of holding on to the Lord. Uh, and all of us could come under the scrutiny of this passage. That's not a bad thing. It, in fact, would be a very good thing if we would submit ourselves to the law of the Lord, if we would submit ourselves to not judgment, but repentance, if we would be reconciled fully to God and leave the things that bind us and enslave us. But as Christians, we've gotten very comfortable in this world. We've gotten very comfortable possessing things, and it's a hard word for us to hear that we need to be preparing to leave this world, that we need to be building up our citizenship, our identity, as members of the kingdom of God, not members of the kingdom of this world. So, in their final words, the apostles speak to us words that are difficult for us to hear, but they're good words, because they remind us that the kingdom of God is worth losing this world, that if we can take up the cross and follow Christ, we will receive, indeed, the great blessing for which we were created. So, almost done with the Didache. Next week, we'll finish it and then move on to something else. For now, God bless you all. Christos Anesti. I'll see you on day three uh, as we finish this week 39.